Our high gloss clear enamel. I gotta be clear here. Clear enamel. I gotta be clear here. Alright, this helmet's looking pretty good. Got about at least three coats of um, our high gloss clear enamel. After kind of running my fingers across it for a few times, like you know, your fingernail, it still is leaving a little bit of scratches. They're real fine, but um, this is going to re require uh, a little bit more durability, I think. It's a helmet. It's going to be worn on stage. It's going to be, you know, traveling with me, hopefully. Um, I want something that's going to be a little bit more robust. So I think this will be like an epoxy, basically. It's a resin, uh, two-part, equal parts, one-to-one. -one. And it's usually used for bar tops uh, to prevent scratching of glasses and that kind of thing. I've used it before on a bar top, and it works really well for that. There's no field manual for how to apply this to a helmet that's going to be a mohawk thing for the head. So I'm kind of improvising and I'm kind of going as I uh, you know, can here. The one thing I will do is probably hit this with some really fine, probably 2000 grit sandpaper to scuff the surface, just get it ready so that this can bond a little bit better. The last thing I want is for this to start lifting once it is applied to this. So uh, let's get started on the sanding. I gotta be clear here. I let this dry, I let this cure for like five days. If you're using the Rust-Oleum product, I mean, you can even see here if you look really close. See it start to peel up there? This stuff does not like to be sanded. Um, even after five or six days, uh, this still is not being sand is not sanding very well. So I'm not going to hit it too hard. I'm just going to scuff the surface. And the idea here is that the gloss of the epoxy is going to uh, restore the shine. So I'm taking this down. I'm going to clean it off, and then from there, pour the uh, two-part pit mix on and then just let it uh, kind of coat this thing. Good thing about the glosses, the, uh, the epoxies, when they're placed down, uh, especially when they get hot because it's, a, it's an exothermic reaction, um, it levels itself, which is good, but this is on a contoured surface and I really don't know what to expect, so I want to be as gentle as possible. After making a few mistakes um, in the past with different projects, I've learned that um, fiberglass, well I should say resin, any kind of liquid like that that's going to be dripping all over the place uh, is better kept in an area like this. So I just prop up the edges with some wood, a bottle, whatever you can find. Gravity is going to force it down into this little trough and then everything from the helmet is just going to drip down into that and that's exactly what we want. Also these little bench cookies that I got, uh, I stacked them on top of each other and uh, covered them with the tarp as well and after we're done once this stuff hardens it'll be like plastic and a lot easier to clean up. Alright I'm just hitting this really quick with some acetone. This stuff um, it, it um, evaporates quickly and it's a good prep for the surface and anytime you sand you're going to leave debris behind that's what a tack cloth usually does but in this case um, the instructions actually recommend if uh, you're using polyurethane or acrylic beforehand to um, definitely sand it and hit it with some acetone so we got a good surface here for bonding and next step is the pour Alright, so we got a lot of air bubbles in here, which we've expected, and we're going to get rid of those by using a heat gun once this is on the surface.
Now what you're seeing me do here is um, there are a couple light areas and since this stuff runs in between all these cracks you get globs and some thicker higher spots in other places and I'm finding that the heat as well as the force of the blow from the heat gun is settling some of these areas down and evening them out and I've also found that using the brush to reapply um, is fine because this stuff lays really really well uh, as soon as it hits the surface and provided that you keep it warm it's going to turn to glass and uh, evenly coat the surface and uh, right now I don't see any air bubbles I don't want to press my luck here so I think I just might stop and call it a night and let this thing cure one thing you also didn't see me do is I went in between all of these little cutouts and I went around the lips of all these areas and I made sure that I coated them so that they at least get coated to the inside of the helmet if I need to uh, sand on the inside of the helmet I can do that but I don't want to have to sand anywhere that will show 